Hey Facebook recovery page, I'm Maggie Cavanaugh and I have Cheryl Hollinstead here with me today and we want to talk to you about some important stuff. Uh, we know, uh, you know, if, if you've seen the topic of this video, the title so to speak is that, you know, hashtag we did recover, hashtag recovery stories and Cheryl has been in recovery for quite a while and she's helping the masses. I love the things that she does interacting with people and you know, she said something to me before we started this broadcast and I was, we were talking about, you know, the power of our stories and she's got the shirt on that says your story can make a difference and I truly believe that your story my story her story and she was talking about you know sometimes you know like I as a lot of times I've, I've shared some from a platform but the one-on-one -on -one intimacy of sharing with someone that they can recover too that's when we get real that's where we get raw a lot of people want to stay anonymous but she's willing to share her story with us today and we're going to talk a little bit about celebrate recovery because that's one of the modalities just one of the areas that God used to help her gain her freedom. So Cheryl, thank you for opening up your beautiful home. Thanks. And allowing me to come over and interview you this morning. Absolutely. So with such an amazing, powerful testimony of the faithfulness of God and, and your recovery story. But first, I want to talk a little bit about Celebrate Recovery. Okay. Can you tell the viewers exactly what is Celebrate Recovery? People hear it and they're like, well, what does that mean? Can okay. you share that with the audience? Uh, absolutely. So Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered recovery program um, where Jesus Christ is our higher power. Um, a lot of people hear recovery and they hear about going and it's, you know, you choose a higher power, but in Celebrate Recovery, it is through the church, it is Jesus Christ is the higher power. And typically it is within a church organization. Um, it is supported by the church, supported by the pastors. It's imperative that the pastors do support it for it to be really, really successful. Yes. Um, I had been to other recovery programs in the past. I had been through other things um, in hospitals, um, mental health. I had done counseling. And I'm not saying those things aren't good because without those things, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Um, I've had a lot of other modalities, like Maggie said. But the Celebrate Recovery is based on um, the Beatitudes. Um, it is based on several other things where we come together. And what it really does is it, it is the church being the church. And I, I really, I can't say that enough. Um, walking alongside each other. I just got back from Saddleback, so it was so exciting for me. Um, and I got to do that with um, some super special people in my life that have walked through a lot of things with me. A lot of really hard hard things and so I just celebrated eight years of sobriety but it wasn't just sobriety from alcohol and drugs um, alcohol may have been my choice of drug to cover up a lot of pain um, but the pains that I had and the alcohol wasn't the problem or the drugs weren't the problem and that's not all we all got hurts habits and hang-ups <laughs> those are just symptoms those yes. are just the things that we use to cover up what's really, really going on inside of us. Mm -hmm. And those things come and happen from traumas and issues that go way, way back. And we're just trying to hide and cover or disassociate from ourselves. And so, you know, it's a long process. It's not just a one and done. I got it. I'm good. <laughs> See ya. I wish it was. And I wish somebody would have told me a long time ago that it was a process and yes. it was progress. It's not perfection, it's progress. Yes. Yes. And we need to walk alongside one another. Mm. It's so important that we stay in community yes. and stay together. And that may look different for everyone, but it's important and imperative that we have brothers and sisters to walk with us and support yes. one another and encourage one another and say, hey, I got you, I'm in this with you. Yes. That's what Celebrate Recovery has been for me, to me, um, <laughs> and still is. And anytime you walk into a Celebrate Recovery, if, if it's West Coast, East Coast, and they, <laughs> you look up on their webpage and it says CR and you go into a church, it's like going to McDonald's. If you get a Coke and fries, <laughs> you get a Celebrate Recovery. And they say, hey, it's your forever family. So mm -hmm. when I fly out to California mm -hmm. and I go to Green Valley Church, I know when I walk in that CR, they open their arms and mm -hmm. hold me and hug me. And I know that. And I'm in Tennessee. So that's what Celebrate Recovery has been for me. And it's the church being the church. And I love it. I, love I absolutely that. love it. I refer a lot of people to this because most of you know that I am an on fire for God kind of woman. And so I love the fact that it's based on the Beatitudes because mm -hmm. the Word of God can come in and help people heal. And even the, you know, not uh, the non-faith based yeah. movements are rooted in faith yeah. as far as, you know, 
um, the higher power and so forth. So you had tried other things before. Yeah. And um, what was your defining moment, Cheryl, where you were like, this is the thing that I need to connect with to walk out accountability? Because a lot of times we think about accountability and we're like, we don't want people knowing our business because we've got shame and we've got all this stuff that we carry, right? And they just possibly couldn't understand my situation, mm. you know? And so we go into these things. So what was the defining moment in your life where you're like, I need to connect with these people and start working these steps and start gaining a level of freedom in my life to move forward? When did that happen? I think when I, I was very independent and mm -hmm. I was uh, real hard pushing and, and I did everything on my own for so long and finally realized I was just broken um, but I was broken multiple times and multiple levels and multiple areas and I remember the first celebrate recovery I walked into and um, I'll never forget this <laughs> they want me to go two days a week <laughs> <laughs> and I have a job and I used to travel about 80% of the time and uh, and I thought, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm busy. I'm important. I have a job. I wasn't just, we used to say, I'm, I wasn't just a hot mess. I was a hot, hot mess. And um, I had a lot of pride. And, mm -hmm. and I was a performer. And yeah. I performed for everything. And I wanted to earn everything. Because mm -hmm. that's how I grew up. And that's where I came from, is trying to earn that love. And so, again, if you start it, stay with it. Because it's a process. And... You know, there were different people that God put in my life to walk with me in different stages of this. And he still does, and he's not done, and I know that he'll continue to. And that's the great thing is I can look back and go, wow. Her to me in a stage, and I was like, where did she come from? It's like she dropped out of heaven. <laughs> and, and it's been a beautiful thing. So, you know, for me, that defining moment was that I realized I no longer could do it in my own strength. Mm -hmm. And I wow. think we try to go in our own strength. Okay, God, here's my agenda. Bless yeah. it. Yeah. Bless it. It's, it's my plan. And a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his path. And yes. so when I could no longer go on my own mm. and I reached the end of me, and everybody's end is different, when I got to the end of me is where he began. Wow. I love that. When I got to the end of me is where he began. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful story. Let me ask you this. You mentioned Saddleback, mm -hmm. and a lot of the viewers may or may not know uh, the history behind Celebrate Recovery. Can you talk to that a little bit and share with them? Um, you know, I know Saddleback was the big conference, yeah. right? And is that an annual conference that takes place for people that are in leadership, or what exactly is yeah. that? Okay, so Saddleback um, Church is where it originated like 30 years ago, um, and they started Celebrate Recovery. And it is an annual. They have an East Coast and a West Coast annual every year. Um, they also do, you can go to their website, and they also actually do trainings throughout the year. Nice. So you can travel to those leadership trainings. And it's just invaluable. I mean, even the even Rick Warren went over, what, what does a great small group look like? And mm -hmm. he did a thing on that. And it's not just for small groups for Celebrate Recovery, but great small groups within any leadership. And so there's so many resources there for us as leaders, as I mean, you know, even John Maxwell talks about you can lead from behind. It doesn't mean you have to have a title. Right, right. Titles don't mean anything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Titles don't mean anything. That's right. Wherever you are, just whatever you put to your hands to, do it with the absolute best that you have. That's good. Because it's, for me, it's like you work into the Lord, and when you get all the other stuff out of the way, and you just go, okay, it's me and you, and stay focused on that, and that's what's important. So... You know, transparency is, is where it's at. And you're being extremely transparent with us this morning. And this is how we heal in community. Mm. You know, we have talked about over the years, everybody wants to be anonymous. And, and we understand that in some situations. But when people come forth and they tell their story, it makes a difference in other people's yeah. life. And I get a little, you know, I get a little raw or transparent and so forth. And people are like that. Aren't you embarrassed of that? <laughs> do you ever get that? You know, do you ever Oh, I that? scare people. Yeah. <laughs> so tell them, uh, and you alluded to the fact that you, you know, that you drank alcohol to cover up the trauma and cover up the pain. When did this start? When did your, when did your um, addiction start? Mm. And, um, you know, we know now you're, you're well eight years into it, but how did this all start? Okay. So I, I really, I've had to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help me and, <laughs> So now I've learned, are you okay with me sharing my story? Um, thank God he's given me somewhat of a filter now because I used to have no filter at all. And you can ask some 
very close members of my family and friends about that. They will verify that. <laughs> um, Filters are good. Keep it PG-13. Yeah, yeah, it's, no, no, no just it'll just be PG. PG. There's no 13 <laughs> here because we know 13 is not good anymore. Right. So, um, right. no, seriously, I, um, I, I didn't, I knew something had happened when I was a young child and I knew there were certain places I couldn't go that affected me. I could not even use a public restroom for probably about 20 years and I didn't know why. I just couldn't. And I had chronic illness, stomach problems, and, and it was just nonstop my entire life. And, and when I was younger, the doctors were like, well, you're just making yourself sick. I mean, that's what they said back in the 70s, you know? Right. And so now we know through technology yes. and science and, and all these things that, you know, what they found is, is literally Dr. Vanderkolk. There's a book called The Body Keeps the Score. I know you're familiar mm -hmm. with that. Yes. Um, that literally our body does keep the score it if does. our brain doesn't. So God is so good to allow us this opportunity to block out things because <laughs> when yeah. we're small, we don't, we can't, we can't handle, we can't yeah. cope. And right. so I, st I was abused at a very early age, um, sexually. And, um, there were several other things that went on and it just continued throughout life. And so I started, um, there was a lot, there was divorce at nine, the house fell apart, um, I mean, it's not different than anyone else's story, really. It Unfortunately, started, this is very common. It's very common. This is yeah. a common thing. I'm not yes. asking for pity. This is a common thing that we don't yes. talk about or know or realize. I mean, years ago, when when a lot some of the people came forth, um, and I learned, and I've been you know trauma certified and some things, and when when the, uh, they all came forth years ago, like with the um, the priests and, and the young men being mm -hmm. abused, yes. one man came forward, and then all of a sudden you started hearing all these stories. It was because when they heard it, the memories came back, and they yeah. went, "Oh my gosh!" And then they did it. Well, had drank and done all these things yes. that like to cover up. Covering and they up didn't the pain. Know why? They didn't know why it was happening. So, what occurred was at the age of eleven, I started drinking, smoking, smoking pot, doing whatever, um, and I and I and I experimented with lots of things. And ended up in a very, very unhealthy relationship with a much older person than me for about two and a half years. And so there was a lot of damage done to my body, but it started at four. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went through years of performance based. Like I was gonna, I left home at 16. I got into a very, uh, what I ran from, I ran to. And I don't think we realize we're doing that because we can't see it. But right. usually when we're running, we don't run from it. We just keep running to it. And it perpetuated for years and years. And so finally, um, in 2010, that was the end of me. Hmm. And um, I had had surgeries multiple times in my life for different things. I was always having chronic infections and, you know, sickness. And so I ended up losing, um, and I, I'm transparent, so if anybody's on here, I'm just going to be real. And, and so I ended up having to lose, I had to have surgery. Um, all of the organs within me had died. And so um, I had already had to have complete hysterectomy, um, multiple surgeries before that. So I ended up losing my colon, uh, part of my small intestines. Um, my bladder quit functioning, was holding two liters of um, fluid. So they had to put a pacemaker for that to work. And for me, initially, it was just, I mean, it ended up being like, multiple surgeries that went bad and I stayed in the hospital and they had to go back and go back. So I've been, I call it being field dressed like a deer. So at this point you get a, you get a sense of humor at this point. <laughs> you have to, um, yeah, right. But I've had EMDR therapy, multiple beautiful people in my life. God has been so faithful through this. And that's why I want to share my story mm. because he is so faithful. Yes. And we prayed, my husband and I prayed for healing and I had so many people praying for me. I mean, I had pastors give me scriptures that said, Hey, I shall not die and I shall live and yes. I will declare the works of the Lord. Amen. And that's all I had. I didn't have anything else. That was it. <laughs> when I say I was at the end of me, I was at the end of me. And that wasn't the end of that. I mean, there were other seasons that I walked through and you know, if I had not, and I did all this, when I got to that point, it was sober. Mm -hmm. Wow. That point became sober, and and that was a what we call the sober reality. Mm -hmm. But that was just sober without alcohol. So after that, the Lord walked me through another twelve step, 
and it was like, let's deal with that character of yours. Let's deal Ooh. with, let's Ooh, deal with that character. Anger. Character. Yeah. I'm going, oh my. Let's deal You're with. You're real. <laughs> let's deal with your fear. Let's deal with your yes. unforgiveness. Yes. Let's deal with your resentment. Let's deal with yes. all of the bitterness. Let's deal with all those things. And I will tell you, that is when it got beautiful. Yeah. And, I, and that was a beautiful breaking because all of this stuff that I lost, I for me, and I can't speak for anyone else, but for me, you know, I look at this, I used to read the scripture and say, it was better to enter the kingdom with your right hand cut off or your eye out than it was to go whole. Now I get it. Mm. Now I get it. People would say, oh, I can't believe that, you know, you would have to have, lose those organs. And I'm like, I wouldn't take them back. God used it. Uh, God used it. I wouldn't take them back. I'm okay to have this for the rest of my life, the days on this earth. Because we live an eternal life, not just this life. And the kingdom has already come. You know, he's here with us. And it's a process. This is just the beginning, and we're working it out. And I get this beautiful opportunity to know his love now. I love that. How I get this opportunity to... Re this is recovery. Yeah. I'm recovering from all this damage. Yes. And Mac Owen is, is the national director at Celebrate Recovery. And he used this beautiful message. He took his Bible and he held up the first three chapters like this. And he mm -hmm. said, this is the story of how it happened. <laughs> the rest of it is the story of how we have to recover from what we did. <laughs> <laughs> that is and, very true. That, that is, is very, very true. true. So here we are. Right. We're getting back. And Jesus came to give that to me. And I want to share that it's real. It can happen. You know, people look at me and go, oh my gosh, you don't have anything wrong. Everything's great. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't. Ooh. This is my saying, and Maggie loves it. <laughs> Don't let the makeup and jewelry fool you. I told her that needs to be the name of her book. I'm just saying. The name of her book needs to be that because when you look at Cheryl, like if you were to run into her off the street, you know, I mean, she's a beautiful woman. She's, you know, super fit. She does a, uh, tell them a bit about the trauma training that you've had um, with and some of the modalities that you okay. have used. I met Cheryl because I was in physical pain, and she helped me recover from some surgeries with physiological stuff. And so, share with them a little bit yeah. about that, if you will. Yeah, I after all of these surgeries, um, I I literally I was in the hospital for 14 days, and so it wow. took me. I couldn't eat, feeding tubes, and everything. So I it took me about a year to recover from that, and so I had total muscle atrophy. And I finally one day made up the decision. I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die living. Mm. I chose that so I was like there are days that I get so tired I need a four-hour nap and that's okay because whatever I got I'm gonna enjoy it when I have it that's right and so the doctors told me to do yoga and I was like okay I'll do that Ugh, I'd rather lift weights but <laughs> that wasn't an option um, so I found a, a really good trainer um, had been doing some yoga at a shop at a place locally and she said hey um, Let's, I got a place that's called Holy Yoga. So I was like, all right. So I checked into it. My husband and I prayed about it. And I just, I went for it. And um, I went ahead and got trained and certified. And then from that, I learned several other modalities. Chair, um, adaptive for things, you know, people's bodies that, you know, you have injuries. And then I went to Yoga Faith and I became trauma certified. And that trauma certification just is sat in my heart because it is for a lot of people who have gone through abuse, um, the sex trafficking, all the abuses that people yes. experience. And it has allowed me this compassion to look at people on the outside and see. And, and I told Maggie, this ties for me into the addictions and recovery so much because what is happening in our bodies and the, and the trauma and the injuries is really that is what causes us to go to the addiction. Right. And so what right. we need to recover from is driven from the trauma that happens. You look at someone and you drive down the street and I don't go, oh my gosh, there they are. I look at them and go, what happened? Yes. What's their what, story? What's their yeah. story? What's their story? What is their story? What what happened? There's a story there in that person. And there's a story for all of us. Yes. There's a story for every one of us. And one of the things they talked about at CR this this conference was we need to break our anonymity for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. someone else. Right. But our right. own anonymity so that we can share and tell people, hey, 
you can get better. Yes, yes. And we can walk together side by side. Not me over you right. or under you, but linking arms together. Yes. And one of the most beautiful moments I had serving some people downtown, um, there was a man who was drunk, and he we were serving food, and he could barely walk. And I was able to link arms with him and walk him over and sit him down and give him food and something to drink. And what the Lord showed me, I'm very sorry about that. That's okay. What the Lord showed me was that man was my stepfather. He's long gone. But that man was the man. He was my stepfather. And the Lord allowed me to serve him. And he redeemed that. Wow. He redeemed that for me and allowed me to love him. Mm. I had forgiven him and made amends to him probably four years before that. So part of, you know, walking out recovery is turning around and reciprocating what you have gotten. Yeah, And you, you've helped so many people yes. in various different ways. And, you know, serving the homeless or loving on yes. someone that someone's like, you know, well, they probably need to deserve to be like that. Mm -mm. That Their life was not always like that. No. You know, we are one choice away. You know, people, All of us. There's a big uh, controversy and a big stigma out there about, you know, well, they, they chose to be that way. Mm -mm. You know, maybe the first time we self medicated we chose that but whenever the reward system in the brain takes over yeah. it is definitely full-blown yeah. you know intervention is needed so recovery takes a lot of different facets you know today we're talking with Cheryl for those of you that have just logged on we're talking with Cheryl about you know celebrate recovery celebrate recovery and her journey with that but there are tons of different ways to get recovery we recover in community and this mm -hmm. is the same it doesn't matter if it's AA NA Al-Anon you know celebrate recovery all this all of these same common factors is coming together yeah. and being real with one another. So if you have a recovery story, I encourage you to share it. Don't share anybody else's, okay? Amen. Cheryl's story is hers to share with you all. And, you know, she's been very raw and very transparent with us here today. But we were talking before, um, whenever I first got here, her beautiful dog is over here. And I don't know if Deke, Deke can you come? Zeke. Zeke. Okay, see Zeke? Okay, now Zeke has also helped her with her recovery. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot underestimate the power of this. If you have a loved one who is struggling, keep loving them, Amen. you know, and if you yourself are struggling, there's help. There is help out there. So we encourage you. Cheryl, is there any last uh, words of wisdom that you want to give the viewers in regards to break, taking that big step to go? Tell them what they would expect from a Celebrate Recovery meeting. Like for those who are going, I don't know, maybe I would go to that. What would they expect if they went to one? You know, I think when you go to a meeting, when you first initially go, there's a big meeting. Everyone meets in a large room. They have worship. Um which is really cool. A lot of times they'll have a meal beforehand if you want to do that. And you can, if you want to, sit in the back row. You don't have to sit up front. <laughs> and I, I remember the first time I went, I'll be honest, and I was like, I don't need to be here with these weird people. <laughs> Those were my thoughts. And I'm going to share this. And, I, and I'm going to bring this back from um, one of the things I picked up from one of them. It says, Come at least six times. Mm, before you make a decision. Before you make yeah, a decision. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Go at least six times before you make a decision. Yeah, that's good. And see and see what you think. And after that, you break off into some groups and you get into some smaller groups where you can just share. And one of the things that I love about it is that you sit in a room and you all talk and thank you for sharing. There's no cross talking. There's no fixing. Mm. There's no, it's not cool. <laughs> it's not okay to do that. Right. Um, and later, if you decide you want to get into a separate 12 step where you really mm. start doing the work, and it's work, and it's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes. It's yes. so worth it. The so freedom. Worth it. It's one thing to be forgiven, but it's another to be free. Mm, that's good. That's good. And that so, came from a man who was in prison. And two life sentences, and God set him free from that prison sentence, and now he serves a Celebrate Recovery. Wow. It goes all over the country. If you could hear the stories of the people that have been set free, it gives you hope. Yes, yes. And hope is a choice. Yes. It's a choice. It's worth it. You're worth it. Yes. You are worth it. Your family's worth it. Your children are worth it. You are worth it, and somebody yes. else. And, and once we do that, I mean, if you've been in any kind of recovery, 
the last thing is now go give it away and you can't you can't keep what you don't give away mm -hmm. you'll lose it that's right that's right. You'll lose it. It's all about helping. And, you know, we're talking about Celebrate Recovery. And for those of you who don't know, it's for people with hurts and hang-ups and, and nice. habits. And so it doesn't matter if you're struggling from an addiction or you're overcoming an abusive relationship yeah. or you're going through grief of the loss of a loved one. I mean, there's just so many different facets of it. And I love what you said about trying at least six times because different groups might have different cultures. Yeah. And so you might go to one and be like, I'm not... I'm not feeling it. Go six times, try it out, and if you're yeah. still not feeling it, don't give up. Go try something else. Yes. You know, we. this is how we learn. This is how we mold. You've got to find your tribe. You've got to find yes. your people that will rally around you, yes. that will not judge you, that will find you right where yeah. you're at. And, you know, it's... It doesn't take much to help someone. You just have to be a little bit further along than them. You take one step further and, you know, you're like, hey, this is what the next step looks like yeah. in, our, in our journey of recovery. So if you are looking for um, a type of modality, uh, a group, uh, a community to bond with, this is a, just one of the many. I mean, there are multiple yeah. uh, groups. I mean, I started out my, um, my first... Um, exposure to any type of recovery was Al-Anon mm. because you know I was I always say I was a crazier codependent than I was an addict because you know I've got a story we all got a story yeah. and you know I had dibble dabbled in everything and then once I got away from that and I was it was like oh now I'm just going to control everybody you know yeah. I'm going to fix my husband I'm going to fix the you know everybody and so you know hence why I ended up going into counseling you know we we those of us that have uh majored in counseling it's usually because we're trying to figure our own junk out yeah. so but the reality is is that you don't have to wait today is the day uh get with someone that you know and trust and if you do not know someone i encourage you uh we i will post later today in this group uh the red line number which is a number you can call to reach out to get help if you need immediate help but if you if you're in a situation where you're functioning and you're like well maybe i have a problem maybe i don't you know you're probably in a level of denial i encourage you to get to one of these meetings. Uh, Cheryl, can you share with them, those that are in uh, the Middle Tennessee area, what are some of the groups that you know about? What is the, some of the, oh. you know, Vision? And yeah. I know there's one, New Vision's what, Tuesday? Is that Tuesday? I think it is on Tuesday. They, and, they were on Fridays, but they're okay. on Tuesdays. And, and Wednesday night, The Experience. Yeah, The Experience has it on Marcus Wednesday. And, and then on Monday nights, um, Northfield. Church of Christ. Church of Christ over yep. on uh, Rutherford, I oh, believe, Rutherford. right? Yep. Uh, there's a Thursday night one as well. I'm trying I think to it's think. It's Smyrna. Smyrna? Okay, gotcha. And there's also, are you familiar with the landing? Oh, the landing. There is a group. Listen, there's a group for children. Yes, and youth, so and it's important. called the landing. I, I'm passionate about that. <laughs> and I will tell you that that is imperative. Um, yes. I, I, our children, okay, our children. And, and if I had had something like that as a child, Right. A, place, a safe place and and yes. that's the other part is that we all want a safe place to go and right. that's what that is the landing is for kids and when you get into a healthy place where there's the kids can go because they're not going to talk to you right <laughs> let's just be real <laughs> kids are not going to talk to their parents because they don't feel safe because of what they're going to get it's kind of like a spouse doesn't talk to a spouse because it's not a safe place and even in these groups if a husband and a wife go it's not our job to talk to one another. It's it's that group's job. Let them be free in that yes. space and let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost, right? It's like, I'm no Holy Ghost Junior. Right. That was another breaking I had to have. Um, that was a hard awakening for me, you know. Just I saying. mean, I'm just being real. Like, we all want, we want what we want when we want it. And, and our timing is not his timing. And that's okay. Yeah. And so, it's having a safe space. Just yes. holding that place for someone. And these kids can go somewhere and be like, Love it. I got Love somebody it. I can go to. And they learn how to cope with what's going on in their home. Yes. They learn how to deal with somebody that's an alcoholic or a, or a codependent or yes. there's drug. Or, listen, it may just be anger issues. Somebody right. may be come home and right. they're angry all the time and they don't know why. Right. And then the child thinks, oh, it's my job to make mom and dad happy. Yeah. Peace mom and dad mom and dad got divorced and so they're they're divorced because I'm not good. Mm -hmm. They don't love me enough. Daddy doesn't come see me because he doesn't love me. How many of us struggle with that rejection? And rejection is a deep core issue. Yes. And so we live the rest of our lives chasing some acceptance and then there we are. So mm -hmm. what that landing is for those kids is a safe place to learn that's yes. not a truth. That's right. not true. Right. Your heavenly father loves you. 
you're okay. You didn't make mom or dad leave or you didn't make them fight. And they learn that as a young child. So these are great things for them to have. I love it. So there's, it's not just for grownups. It's for children. And, that, and our children are what? They're our next generation. They're the ones that right. are raising up. And we got to love them. And if we don't have that, if they don't have grandparents or parents, then what's it, our job? To step in and be that parent or grandparent if we can. It's just a great thing for them. So there's all kinds of resources available. Yes. And I encourage you, go to, you know, Google it, you know, yeah. and find out more information. You know, so maybe this isn't a fit for you, but there is a fit for you. Somewhere yeah. you're going to plug in to a community of people that can help you walk out your, uh, you know, your sobriety and get you to the place that you need to be. And I'm so thankful for you, Cheryl, to take the time to be real and raw and transparent because we heal whenever it gives us permission mm. to say, I, I'm not okay here. I need to make a change. I need some help. And when we see people that are willing to share their story, it takes the barriers down of, wait, you know, if they if they can do it, I can do it too. And you can do it. If you're watching this broadcast and you're in need, I want to encourage you. We do recover. And I want you to come out to the Rutherford Recovery Fest on mm -hmm. September the 7th. Yeah. It's at Patterson Park from uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is going to be a family event, and I love this because we have got so many. There's like 45 exhibitors uh, that's going to be there. We've got like the Ink Blot um, project where this guy tells, you know, people tell stories through tattoos. There is all kinds Great. of just... Yeah. <laughs> yes, our, the ink tells a story. Just saying. Uh, my sister, she's a photographer. She has this little thing. There's a story there, and you alluded to it earlier, that, you know, with your shirt, and I love this, and I'm just going to quote this again. It says, your story can make a difference. So, share your story with somebody who's hurting. Let them know that they're not alone. We are only one bad choice away from leading down the wrong path. And so, I encourage you guys, embrace the recovery movement. Mm -hmm. Help those that are in it. If you're not in it, do what you can. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all on September 7th at Patterson Park. Any last words? It is okay to not be okay. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. All right. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.